And here's another example of how to use enthalpy in calculating the heat released in a reaction. But in this case, we have some other parameters that we need to deal with. So here we have a displacement reaction where we take ferric oxide, we add aluminum to them, and so aluminum is going to displace the iron, and so now we have aluminum oxide and iron by itself. The reaction has a release of 852 kilojoules, if this of course in molar quantities, and so now the question is how much energy is evolved, and then that word evolved always gets me. What we really are meaning here is that the energy released in the reaction if we use 152 grams of aluminum in this reaction. So now it's a little wrinkle to this, to this particular problem. And so in order to do that, we have a handy equation right here. And this is how you do that. So we start out with trying to calculate the energy release, which that's really what they're asking for. When they say how much energy is, is evolved, they really mean how much energy is released. And so we start with the energy of the reaction, the delta H, the enthalpy. So if this reaction was taking place and these were the molar quantities, then the heat released would be 852 kilojoules in that reaction. But we're limited. We're limited by the fact we only have 152 grams of aluminum. Well, how much is that? Well, it's a certain number of moles, and so we have to figure out the mass and the molar mass and so forth. So here we have the delta H of the reaction multiplied times the number of moles of the reactant that we're interested in. In this case, we have aluminum. And so we go one reaction divided by the number of moles of the reactant because then that way the reaction cancels out and we're left with number of moles. But now we have to convert the number of moles to how much mass of aluminum we have. So we put in the mass of the reactant and then the mass per mole. And when we do that, in the end, we get the total amount of energy released by this much of the aluminum. So now that we have the handy equation, let's go ahead and put in all the numbers. And in the end, we need to know the energy released in the equation, and in this particular reaction, limited by 152 grams of aluminum. So, the amount of energy released in the reaction, the way it's written out here, is 852 kilojoules. Now, we multiply that times one reaction, and of course, that would be per reaction. And so, this particular reaction gives us how many moles of aluminum, and here we are, we introduce two moles of aluminum in the reaction, so two moles of aluminum. Alright, so that gives us a ratio of, for each reaction, we consume two moles of aluminum. Now we multiply that times the mass of the reactant that was given, which is 152 grams of aluminum, and then we divide that by the molar mass of the aluminum, and the molar mass of aluminum, just looked it up, is 26.98 grams of aluminum divided by one mole of aluminum. Okay, now let's see what cancels out unit-wise. So we have reaction cancels out, mole of aluminum cancels out with mole of aluminum, and grams of aluminum cancels out with grams of aluminum, and then all we have left is numbers and kilojoules, so the answer will be in kilojoules. And let's find out with our calculator what that number is. So we have 852 divided by 2 times 152 and divided by 26.98. And we end up with exactly, wow, that's interesting, exactly 2,400 kilojoules. And that makes the problem a whole lot easier when you have this relationship. So what you do is you start with the number of joules of the reaction. Then you want to know how many moles of the reactant that you're interested in you have in the reaction. So you go reaction divided by the number of moles. And then you want to convert that to mass. And so we have the mass of the sample and divide that by the molar mass. So it gives you the ratio of based upon this many grams of the aluminum and knowing that this is the molar mass, how many moles of the aluminum do we have in our sample? And then we proportion that to the number of moles in our reaction. And with all that, we get the proper number of kilojoules released in the reaction. And that's how you do a problem like that.